the Syracuse Orange. Last year under Dino Babers uh, actually impressed me quite a bit. They were a lot better than I anticipated them being, especially because 2020 was just a disaster. But at the same time, they had to play a lot of young guys. They had a bunch of injuries, a lot of guys that opted out, etc. They went 5-7 and seven last year. The postgame win expectancy record was 6.64 and 5.36, so closer to a 7-win team than a 5-win team. And they beat themselves quite a few times. The offense was not great, but it was better than it was in 2020. And they just kind of didn't even worry with passing the football. Uh, when you've got Schrader and uh, the running back, um, Sean Tucker, then it, both of those guys can run. Makes it easy. So, when you look at this, uh, we'll start off with the offense on this. Uh, their returning production is number 12 in the country, by the way. And number 12 is pretty good. But at the same time, roster strength is not great. Um, I mean, this is... Roster, well, we'll get to roster strength here in a minute. Uh, the new OC is former Virginia offensive coordinator Robert Anai, and he brought his quarterback coach Jason Beck with him. Uh, they, that team at Virginia was number eight in offensive SP plus in 2021. They were really good on offense. They could move the football. I don't know that he's got a quarterback here that can do the things that Brennan Armstrong can do, so that's a little bit different. Uh, and I wonder if he's going to move away from what made them successful last year. Like, this is two really good offensive minds between Dino Babers and Robert and I. We'll see. Um, they are returning 81% of their production on offense. That's number 16 in the country. Uh, Sean Tucker was the only true sign of life last year. The quarterback, Schrader, was the second leading rusher. He kept the team organized, much more so than they were under DeVito or any of those guys. Uh, number 79 in PPA per drive. Number 93 success rate. Number 117 scoring opportunities. Uh, that's drives inside the 40. Like, Anai has got to find a way to make this offense efficient. Like, they were number 50 as far as explosive play rate. And it was able to get them some wins and keep them in games. But, whew, uh, I, I don't know. that. I mean, that offense was just not able to get it done last year. Just not able to get it done. The defense coordinator, Tony White, uh, student of the Rocky Long 335, of course, at San Diego State. Like, it obviously works because this defense is the reason why they were good last year, or, or somewhat good. How's that? They were competitive. The reason they were competitive is because of that defense. Uh, they, were, they were number 39 in PPA per drive, number 15 in scoring opportunities allowed, but number 106 in points per scoring opportunity. So once guys got down there close to that end zone, they could not get stops. So you got to find a way to fix that. If you, could, if you could keep them from getting down there, then you were okay. Once they got down there, they they scored most of the time. Most of the time. So that's not good. Uh, replacing the entire starting defensive line, they do have all eight starters back in the backfield. Uh, every one of them is still an underclassman. 2023 could be really good if Babers is to survive that long. And so that means you got to get something going with the offense, obviously. They're projected favorites in four games. they got seven games where the spread is expected to be within eight points. Like after the bye week, the schedule is brutal. Absolutely brutal. You get done with that bye week on October 8th, you've got NC State at Clemson, Notre Dame at Pitt, Florida State at Wake Forest at Boston College. I mean, this is this is rough. And so you got you to gotta make sure you get some wins early. And the wins early would have to be over Louisville uh, and Purdue. They, they've also got at UConn, Virginia, and Wagner in those first five. But, man, that back half is something else. Uh, the postgame win expectancy, like I said, Said this team should have been closer to seven wins as opposed to five last year. But the reason that they weren't there is that turnover margin in the penalties per game. Number 95 turnover margin, number 71 penalties per game. That's going to do it to you. you got to clean that up. Uh, is it the final make or break year for Dino? That's another key this season. Roster strength is the worst in the Atlantic, but they would be fourth best in the Coastal. Uh, should they be able to compete? Like I, I think they would. I think so. Uh, the other key to the season is Garrett Schrader. Like, can he improve his passing? Number 117 in passing success rate. That was way too one-dimensional to cause any real damage against the uh, the ACC defensive lines. I've got them at 5-7. and seven. Like, Yeah, they're projected favorites in four games. I think they can win five. Uh, and I don't know exactly where those are going to come from. I've got a win over UConn, a win over Virginia, a win over Wagner, and then I've got a win over Florida State and Wake Forest. But it could be any of the other ones. They could beat Pitt. They could beat Boston College. You know, I, there's there's ways for them to get, and they could get to a bowl game. They could beat Purdue. They could beat. They could even beat Louisville. I just I don't think it is 
insanely likely. Uh, so I do think that, I mean, I've got him at five and seven. I've got him missing a bowl. I think Dino gets one more year if they're competitive because they'll see that they've got all these guys coming back. It, you got to see some kind of improvement on the offensive side with the new offense coordinator. That's what you got to see. So we'll we'll see what they end up doing there. But that one's going to be tricky. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com. And if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter at GaryWCE, at Chris B. Giannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.